Hello there, people, and welcome to Game 8. Today we have our first impressions of an interesting cyberpunk game called Anno Mutationem. A hack and slash side scroller, it does a great job with blending both 2D and 3D to deliver something very visually pleasing. With a huge world to discover and explore, as well as many different characters to meet. Let's see what this interesting take on the cyberpunk genre has to offer. It's worth noting that we've only got to experience the first two hours of the game, so we haven't really seen what the whole game has to offer. The game starts off with a scene of missiles that results in a giant explosion, which looks like it came straight out of an epic anime show. Since we've only got to play the first few hours of the game, we never really understood what this event was supposed to mean. After a few more scenes, the game then introduces us to Anne Flores, the game's main protagonist along with her companion Ayane, who uses a hologram to project herself. Darling, it's our second friend anniversary gift. After a friendly banter with the two and a quick shower scene, oh my, oh my, the game sets off to explore the world of Anno Mutationem. As we continue through the game, we learn that Anne has some sort of disease called entangulitis in which she is in desperate search for a cure. After doing a few chores, we are then introduced to some of the important characters in the game. We meet up with a scientist named Alan Doyle, who is helping Anne research more about her condition and to also help her enhance her battle suit. Just a sec. Alright, I upgraded the system. Then we have Nakamura, who is Anne's sister, and Holt, her adoptive father, who both live and work at a bar called the Sicilian Jar. Dad. The story then picks up when Anne finds out that her brother, Ryan, may have found the cure she's been looking for, but is being pursued by some pretty shady people because of it. Sadly, in our two hours of play, we didn't really reach far enough into the game to know what happened after. The story's interesting enough that we do want to know what happened to Anne's brother, and what kind of sort of dangerous situation he has gotten himself into. Ryan is searching for N542? What did he find? As for the world itself, the game takes place in a few cities that the player is able to freely travel to. There are a total of 5 explorable areas we saw on the map. We were able to unlock 3 of these areas with the amount of time that we played. These areas are Scop City, Margarita, and Noctis City. Wait, wait. hold on. Noctis City sounds like a reference to another popular cyberpunk game. Hmm. Oh, and speaking of references, this game is filled with a lot of references from other media too. Things like suddenly having a fighting game intro, to mixing drinks and saving lives, and also... Wait, is that, a, is that an S... Is that an SCP? Abort! 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 Alright, now we're up again. Let's move on to the gameplay. The combat in this game is a hack and slash type system. You are able to hit the enemies with a variety of weaponry and also block or dodge incoming attacks. The combat system is fine and does its job but doesn't really go out of its way to stand out. There were also a few moments where the controls felt unresponsive, especially when firing the pistol. Once you get the hang of the game's combat system, it's just a matter of slashing the enemies until you defeat them which may get repetitive very fast. But one good thing about the combat encounter we experience is that there are multiple enemy types to shake things up. From fast knife guys to flying drones and also whatever this guy is. Oh, he fell. Another annoying thing that we've experienced is fighting our own depth perception. We keep running into walls and tables due to the one perspective camera. There was also a time during the first big combat encounter where it just starts to get confusing on where to go. Like, I mean, he's just on the other side of the parking lot. Just run, just run around the parking lot. Why do I have to go to the left when he's just right there? Alright, alright, enough with the negatives. Let's focus on the positives of this game. Oh yeah, the exploration. Exploring the world is where the game gets fun and interesting. Every single part of each city looks great and it really shows how much love was put into it. 
from people just cheering to their favorite virtual idol on the streets, to robots dancing in the bar, to some sweet tunes. I mean, look at Mr. Robot Go! He's got some moves. You can even visit stores to shop for new weapons, or you can even just go off to the side alleys and find collectibles. There are a lot of places to find and explore within the first three cities. Each city also has its side activities to take part in. You can mix drinks as a bartender in the city of Margarita, or take part in a surprise tournament for this... Corn guy? Corn guy? Uh, wait, what is the prize? Pr premium, premium corn juice? You know what I'm in. Aside from just exploring, you can also complete some side quests for some of the citizens living in this world. From helping solve a murder case to, to even just trying to find out who keeps throwing their trash down from the upper apartment floors. There are also a few areas that require you to start hacking to be able to access new areas. That is where the skill tree comes in. The game features many ways to upgrade Anne to make her more powerful than she already is. From learning how to hack doors to increasing her health and damage. The more encounters you go through, the stronger Anne gets. Speaking of Anne, for some of you who really want to express yourself differently, or more authentically, you are able to change up the way Anne dresses by choosing her wardrobe or by going to a clothing store. There are many different types of outfits to give to Anne, like this sleek and simple outerwear, to a stylish all-black outfit, or a... Uh... Is that a maid outfit? Anyway, there are many ways to personalize Anne to your liking. <laughs> Definitely not thinking about the maid outfit. Nope, uh, nope, nope, nope. And now for the best part of the game. Oh my, the visuals. The visuals and art design are what makes the game shine. The way the city looks in the background as you fight multiple enemies just looks stunning. And adding the amazing sound design to it makes the game feel more alive and more memorable. It's also not just the sound effects that are great. For an indie game, the voice acting in this game is also well done. Can I get you anything? You must be Anne Flores. Uh, yes, that's my name. Can't we skip it this time? No, no, no. I need to make sure the program is stable. Ding dong! The Yotoko girl here to save the day! Sure, the characters like Ayane may get annoying to some people, but the rest of the entire cast of characters really sound like they belong in the world. Can you crack it? Sure! It's quite simple. All in all, we actually enjoyed our first two hours of our playtime with Anno Mutation M. From the visuals and just exploring the world, it was quite a treat to explore a different take on the cyberpunk genre. The mix of 2D and 3D blends so well and it's amazing how well it was implemented. The promising start to a bigger story also makes us want to know more about this world along with the interesting characters living in it. The combat is fine as it is. But it kinda lacks depth and it may be understandable if some players may find it too repetitive and boring. But if you enjoy these type of games and love seeing some amazing visuals, give Anno Mutation M a try. Thank you for watching! If you're interested to see more of our 2R impressions and all other things gaming, click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Till then, this is GameMate Information Station, signing off.